The 20th century is littered with the examples of many, many martyrs of the Orthodox Church. Some we know very well, some we don't know much about. On November 23rd, the Orthodox Church celebrates the memory of Hieromartyr Grigol of Georgia. Now, this future Hieromartyr began his career as someone who wanted to spend his life uh, essentially studying, being someone who would have a very vibrant intellectual existence and who was very much concerned for unearthing so many of the ancient manuscripts from the Church of Georgia that at that time were found all around the world. After he finished his seminary studies, he received a master's degree in philosophy from Tbilisi University. After this, he was sent to Germany at the University of Berlin, where he completed his doctoral degree in philosophy, whereupon after that completion was invited to become a lecturer at the University of Bonn in Germany. After this, he made his way to England, where he spent much time uh, both at the um, uh, British Museum and also at the University of Oxford, still unearthing so many things that were part and parcel of the history of the Church of Georgia. After this, he went to Paris, and from Paris his studies took him to many other places around the world. But Paris at that point had become his base, where he also found, unknown to many people at the time of his repose, a church in dedication to the great equal to the apostles, the Saint Nino of Georgia. Now during this time, the fascist forces of the Nazi regime invaded Paris, of course. We all know that story. And our Hiram Martyr was arrested finally for hiding Jews. Of course, Jews were on the radar of the Nazis all over the world. And St. Grigol felt that it was his duty as a Christian to protect these people. After his arrest, he was sent, as so many were, to Poland, first to one camp and finally to Auschwitz itself. And again, we all know about the horrors that occurred at Auschwitz. St. Grigol, however, found it within himself and no doubt to the grace of God who was calling him to something far more profound than a simple life in academia. He found it in himself to have the courage to offer himself for others. There are two accounts of his repose. One is that there was a German officer in the camp who was found murdered, and the Nazis had all of the prisoners come out in freezing temperatures, absolutely naked, and they were going to stand there until someone confessed. St. Grigol, feeling it his Christ-like duty to save others, did confess, whereupon the Nazis turned loose the dogs on him and then poured gasoline over him and set him on fire. However, we do have another account that was given by one of the prisoners at Auschwitz later on to a metropolitan in the Orthodox Church, whereas he claims that St. Grigol offered himself up to go to the gas chamber instead of a Jew with a large family. We don't know absolutely which one of these accounts is the true one. But either way, this remarkable man who engaged upon what I'm sure he thought was going to be a life of quietude and study and prayer and a life of researching for his beloved Georgian Orthodox Church. This man instead was called to offer the ultimate Christ-like sacrifice of giving himself in place of another. Many others did the same. Many, many did the same. But this man, while revered in the Georgian church, is not known too much outside of her boundaries. And so that's why we are considering St. Grigol, one of our hidden saints today, a relative contemporary of us in our world and our society and someone who shows us 
that even in this day and age, martyrdom through great self-sacrifice and agreement with the will of our Lord Jesus Christ is possible. God bless all of you. Bye-bye.